But now, let's talk about my talk. <laughs> uh, there, I mean, everybody in the audience know that very few entities in the field of critical care medicine have received more attention than this syndrome, ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. So um, this syndrome was first uh, clinically described in, in a paper, in the Lancet paper in 1967 by a group of physicians from Denver in the United States um, from a cohort of 272 patients. They had identified in 1960s, in the 60s, 12 patients the having a different etiology to be uh, to develop acute respiratory failure, they have a, a constellation of uh, similar symptoms and behavior. Uh, was the, not only acute re respiratory failure, but they realized they have uh, a very severe loss of compliance, and in the X-ray, they have a diffuse alveolar infiltrates. That was a time that, for the first time, they are uh, using PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure. But you have to read, when you read the paper very carefully, you see that some of the patients were treated without the ventilator. In fact, two patients were treated with room air. One patient with oxygen mass for uh, 30 liters per minute, and two patients with uh, nasal oxygen. So by this, terms you don't consider today some of those patients in the list as having ARDS. Could be. In fact, they, when they uh, mention or they report the mortality rate in this series of 12 patients, um, there was almost 60%. And it's a, a figure that has been cited over and over, over and over, but has nothing to do with the way we practice medicine today. It's, it's two different groups or two different behavior. Those who uh, were treated with PEEP, they have a low mortality rate. They mention, I mean, of course, we have a 12 patients. You know, we, we cannot do a statistic in that, but it's just when you do a critical review of the paper, you realize that two uh, out of five treated with PEEP uh, died. However, almost everyone who uh, were not treated with PEEP died. But I see, I still uh, call your attention that four patients five patients were treated without mechanical ventilation. They, the same authors, they, um, they uh, were the first as well to uh, call the attention that really this is not a disease. This is uh, it's a syndrome. Uh, it's a way of talking into the community. Uh, the, the, they said, I confess that the term Petty was one of the authors, Tom Petty. The term ARDS is a lumping, you know, it's a mixture of many diseases, that, but it's a way to understand each other uh, because it's a, it's a desirable lumping of a variety of pulmonary insults in order to, to talk to understand this syndrome. In 1975, when they have more experience already with PIP, they even mentioned that a febrile blood gas response to PIP should be, I, I would like to put that in, in, in capital letter, should be part of a definition of the syndrome. However, that is, has not been the case, 1975. Now, since that definition or since that first clinical description, there's a general agreement that the hallmarks of this syndrome include to have a predisposing illness, uh, to have a bilateral pulmonary infiltrate in the chest x-ray, to have a severe hypoxemia and a gas exchange, to be ventilated and treated with PEEP, and to uh, have not ruling out the non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So patients with heart failure should be not included in this definition. However, it's a general agreement on this criteria, but in our specific, uh, the specific values for this criteria vary uh, among the clinicians and the searchers and the researchers. So I was told, I was invited to talk about the, dif the difference between United States and Europe uh, when we talk about ALI, acute lung injury, and ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. So I have to say that, you know, in, in many ways, 
we belong to the same civilization, Western civilization, and we are very similar in many ways. But Americans has a very particular way to see other things, okay? For example, uh, here, term, a car for an American could be even a cow, you know? This is why you have it there. So definitions, not all the definition can be accepted as universal. What is universal for American is not the same for the European. In Europe, uh, we are more comfortable. We have a different vision. <laughs> Before we go to the uh, fitness center, we have, you know, <laughs> we prepare ourselves. I think we have, we need more data. Uh, and I'm going to show you the two sides of the coin, American and European. We don't have too many data, but, uh, but uh, certainly it's European and, and American. Uh, and my position in my talk is that the difference in the incidence, prevalence, mortality, um, uh, is uh, in, in, in re reported in the ARDS literature is based on difference in patient selection in all these published series, in the severity of the injury, in the, uh, the distribution of the uh, diseases that are under the, uh, the development of the ARDS, you know, trauma, sepsis, pneumonia, pancreatitis, the age, and then the where the, the, those patients were treated, or the way the patients uh, are treated, or is treated. So let's start with the incidence, because that was one of the first uh, figures that everybody uh, uh, knew about it, uh, in order to know the dimension of this problem. Well, it's really... Uh, sad for me that the most cited figure about the incidence of ARDS by Americans, by Americans and for many Europeans, comes from a report that was, uh, it's a report, it's a government report from the National Heart and Lung Institute that was uh, published in October in 1972. There was the result of a task force on respiratory diseases by a group of distinguished uh, uh, clinicians in the field of intensive care medicine, critical care medicine, some of them, uh, they are the, uh, some of the authors of the original paper, the Lancet paper that I mentioned to you in 67, like Asbo and uh, Bigelow, but the other guy, that the Henning Pontopidan, like uh, Ben Dixon, like other um, uh, pioneers in the critical care field, and they have a meeting, it's a panel, Okay, this is a panel of experts, and they made up a number. This was a report that was, uh, as I said, published in a non-peer-reviewed publication. It was an estimate by the members of that panel that they extrapolate data from their own experience from six Army General Hospitals in the United States. And not only that, they, all, they, they count, they divide it, they multiply, and they say, well, I think that will be around 150,000 cases per year. Then Arthur Slaska and myself, a few years later, we, we, we discovered, we, we, we checked the number of patients, the, sorry, the population of the United States in that year, and, and this number, we were we the first to publish that number. In fact, 75 cases per 100,000 population per year, that is the way the incidents should be reported, you know, uh, 100,000 inhabitants per year. So 75 cases, that number is a very similar number to the number of all new cases per year of cancer in the United States, okay? So this is a number that is too big to be true. I mean, this. And in fact, uh, that panel suggests as well in 1972, where there's not too much experience about mechanical ventilation and dealing with this new syndrome, that the mortality rate should be 40%. But they realized that in the good hands, in the treatment by good experts, very good physicians, clinicians in critical care, mortality should be around 25%. That is mentioned in that report. It's a report difficult to find it because it's not published in a peer-reviewed journal. And it's a document for the government, so you can, you can uh, try to, I have a copy, you can, you can try to get it, but it's very difficult. Anyway, that report in, 
But in fact, beside that number, that is not the most important part, it's a very nice report because when you read it very carefully, that report tells you the direction that we should go in the next 20 years. And in fact, this has been the direction that we uh, has been uh, um, since then. And one of the points said, that this is just an estimate, that we need to know really the true dimension of this problem. We should do a studies about the incidence of acute respiratory failure and ARDS. That was said in 1972. In fact, the incidence of acute respiratory failure in the United States was unknown until the year 2000, almost 30 years after that, when a paper came out in chest. Uh, they did, what they did is, I mean, to count the, the incidents or to the incident in a country of 300 million people is very difficult. But it has a system um, that you can collect information for, um, from discharge records from patients who has been uh, discharged from hospital, alive or dead. And by putting four questions in that system, like acute respiratory failure or distress, uh, mechanical ventilation, you cannot say how many hours because that is you know, an information available. To be hospitalized more than or e 24 hours or more, or to have an age older than five years. So they came out with a number. They counted. It was, and when you put it in the figure that we used to uh, count to measure the, or to compare the incidence, it's around 137 cases per 100,000 population. Now, I have to warn you that if this number includes everyone, it doesn't matter the cost. You, you could be after coming from the operating room for a few hours, okay? Patient with heart problems, patient with COPD, with asthma, you know, with transplantation, patient who are in the unit only for, uh, you know, a couple hours after the operating room, patient, it doesn't matter the reason. Everyone who meet the criteria that I mentioned to you are included here. So it's almost everyone, 137. So that is a number that I, I can accept as the incidence, sorry, as the incidence of acute respiratory failure in the United States because you will see later that it's very similar to the one we have in Europe. Now, however, since 1972 to the 2000, or even to now, we don't have the data about the incidence in the United States about the, the, the ARDS or ALI. We have some papers talking about prevalence in a, a very specific states or region or units or cities, like this one, for example, in, in, in Colorado, they, they reported almost 7% of patients would have a risk conditions. Uh, look at the, here, the definition. So even though I mentioned to you the general criteria, then every unit or every clinician has a specific uh, values to define ARDS. Uh, the mortality rate in that series is 65, but it, it doesn't mean anything to you. I mean, the mortality rate of whatever group of patients uh, is difficult to compare uh, in terms of, of, of other centers. Here, for example, in Los Angeles, 2% of all critically ill patients are meeting in that hospital. Uh, this is for a year survey. Uh, again, the definition, this definition is different to the previous one, and in fact, in this a study, they include unintubated patients, non-intubated patients. Now, the first attempt come from Europe to identify, to know the incidence or the, the dimension of this problem. Come from England, uh, when a year, one year survey uh, in Yorkshire. Uh, the problem with that paper uh, in the in 1988 is that, well, they study a whole region of almost 300.6 million people. And it's not definition of ARDS in that paper. So we don't know what, what kind of patient they, are, they were included. Uh, they only, you have to accept what the author said. We, we study ARDS patient, that's it. They don't mention anything that was published. And, uh, but they uh, came out with a number, four point cases, 4.5 cases per 100,000 uh, inhabitants per year. A very, I mean, in order of magnitude, very big difference compared to 75 per 100,000. Now, the really the first study, uh, the published study, uh, I would say, with the, some methodology about, you know, and um, counting every single patient who has met in the system, came, uh, we, we, we did it and uh, we published in 1989. Uh, again, 
the definition that we use was based in the most common definition or accepted definition in those years that was by uh, the leading center in critical care, sorry, in acute respiratory failure in that time, those years in United States, the Mass General Hospital by the group of uh, Henning von Tropina in those years. So for most Europeans, I think, especially for German, uh, the Mass General was the gold standard uh, to treat patients with a severe acute respiratory failure. So we follow uh, that definition for many years in our place and we did a study uh, in one of the two provinces of the Canary Islands uh, for three years. And uh, we collect, uh, so this region in, that in those years they have a, a population of 700,000. Uh, we collect a number of patients that end up again with the, an incidence very close to the one that by the Yorkshire, by the British, 3.5 cases per 100,000 population per year. The mortality rate was 50%. So, that number was cited several times because was you know was the first time that they uh, at least convinced people that the incident was not 75, and the German uh, a group of German uh, clinician want to validate and uh, and uh, and that was in 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 Berlin, in Berlin Le Lewandowski with a group of Conrad Falke, they tried to validate that figure and they studied for not for three years but for two months all the patients admitted in the city of Berlin. They were able to count, to, uh, uh, to include in the study, 98 of the ICUs. Uh, only two were excluded, but very uh, small ones. Uh, so and then they, you know, they tried to adjust. But uh, that was a really a big effort, to study 98 ICUs for two months. This is a big effort. Now, the definition they, they used was a different one. They, uh, they use the land injury score that I'm going to uh, back in a minute to explain to you. Well, in Berlin, they found that the, the, the incidence was very close to ours. Three cases per 100,000 population per year. So this is a, a very modern society. This is uh, 1995, so it was in the 90s. So, you know, I was very happy to see that. And even though the mortality, 50 to 58, was very similar. Even though they have a different definitions, okay? Now, the last study dealing with uh, incidents was in Scandinavia. There was in a study in, in which they include Sweden, Norway, uh, sorry, uh, yes, Norway and, and Iceland. Um, they, they did an eight-week survey. So I imagine that, you know, when you do an incident study, it's very difficult to put everybody together. The definition that you was very, I mean, I think was the same at the Berlin group. And uh, the, the population is bigger, of course almost 12 million people, and they uh, found out that the incident was very high, 13. This is the highest incidence in a scientific report published so far, 13.5 cases. Now, when you read that paper, it's amazing to me because in the Berlin paper, uh, the incidents, they study not only the RDS, they study patients with acute respiratory failure too, and they classify patients in three different groups, ARF, acute respiratory failure, then ALI, acute lung injury, and then RDS. And I do like that because the mortality rate was like that too in the Berlin group, in the Canary Islands group, and in many other groups. The, the mortality rate of the ARF is very low compared to ALI or RDS. Here, however, in the Scandinavian group, the mortality rate of a patient with acute respiratory failure, ALI and ARDS, was the same, 41%. That, for me, is extremely high when you consider the uh, outcome of today, the outcome of patients with acute respiratory failure in any, in a normal and average ICU around the globe. Now, what is this compared to the United States again? So I said before that 137 cases per 100,000 uh, people in the United States. Uh, and however, in Europe, the two studies that I mentioned to you, Germany, they found 88.6, almost 90. That is very similar because you have to take in consideration two things, two factors. First, age. So they include older people. So when you, And second is they only include patients that have been ventilated for more than 24 hours. When you take that in consideration, an adjustment is around the same number. It's around 115. So and here will we go down to 110. So really it's a very similar number. So we Americans and Europeans agree that the incidence of acute respiratory failure in modern ICUs is the same. 
uh, is a little over 100 uh, cases per 100,000 population. So far, in that sense, it's the same. Now, you remember that I mentioned to you that some groups use a different definition. The fr at the beginning, the mass general was a very popular definition. Uh, and then the came the other one, because John Murray and the colleagues they want to, uh, pr they, they propose an expand definition in order to get to standardize uh, studies. And they came out with this uh, scoring system. They call the, and it's today it's known as uh, LIS, land injury score or uh, land injury severity score. And they consider four parameters, x-ray, uh, PF ratio, compliance, and PEEP. And they said that it was a minimum of three factors that should, to, uh, that should measure. And they came out with a number, a magic number that those who has more than 2.5, you should consider ARDS. You know, this is an arbitrary, of course, an arbitrary definition. But that was the first step to agree that it's a really a strong argument to have a universal definition to not really to treat patients because it's nothing to do with treatment, but at least to compare for research purposes or uh, to compare other studies, compare mortalities, incidents, and not only that, even to include patients in clinical trials. So like cardiologists, when you, they talk about my myocardial infarction, everybody knows what they are talking about. So, and, th and they uh, end up with a definition of ALI and ARDS that the only difference was the PF ratio. But we have a big problem here that we didn't take in consideration the, the recommendation by the pioneers or the authors of the first description of the syndrome, that they, we should take in consideration the level of PEEP in order to identify patients in a standard way, eh, patients with ARDS. Now, what is the, the, the similarity between ALES, the, the land injury score, and, and the European uh, American definition? Uh, they identify the, the same patients. Well, we didn't know until this year. 2001, that a group from Toronto uh, based on a retrospective, this is a re retrospective data, from the clinical trial, they were able to identify from that series of 180 patients, 65 that meet the criteria, met the criteria of the European, and 75 with a land injury score. But those patients were not the same. You identify more patients with a land injury score, but those patients were not the same. In fact, the agreement between the two definitions was very, I mean, it was moderate, was not very, not strong. Problems with the American U European? I am very uncomfortable to consider a patient with ARDS uh, by having a PO2 of 70% on 35 uh, FIO2. I am very uncomfortable to consider because in, in the past, or even today, I will consider this patient having acute respiratory failure. But ARDS, you know, and uh, so if you don't take in consideration the PIT value here, so this patient should be included in any American study or European study dealing with ARDS patient according to the European consensus definition. But this definition has not been universally accepted because you have here, for example, is Thomas Stewart. He considered patient at risk to ARDS if they have a, a less than 250. In, uh, in Atlanta, 175. It was still used for many years, the, the, uh, the mass general definition, 150, as a more severe degrees. In fact, a, a, a recent European study, um, a multi-center, they used the same definition. Uh, even when, when those recent clinical trials on mechanical ventilation and RDS, they use different definitions. It's very difficult to compare a series when they have a different number, I mean, different kind of patients. Because I mentioned to you, um, John Murray said that land injury score greater than 2.5. He didn't say equal to 2.5. But Amato considered patients with less severe degrees of, of land injury. He had Thomas Stewart. Uh, he, you know, he uh, increased the threshold to 250. Uh, and here the network, the NIH, even though the, the title of, of the paper is the mechanical ventilation in ARDS. 18% of the patient has ALI, so that, that is a different population. Now, uh, as I said in the European study, a recent U European epidemiological study to see 
uh, if ARDS and ALI behave differently, so they, they consider uh, the, the limit to be called ARDS, the PF ratio of 150. And we found out that the mortality rate of these two samples are uh, uh, completely different and statistically uh, different. Now, the last part, PEEP. Remember they said that we should take in consideration the PEEP level? Why I, th I think we should take in consideration the PEEP value? It's because this is a case, a patient has been on P5, P5, okay, we don't put anybody in PIP0 with the RDS. P5, this patient has hypoxemia with 50% oxygen, uh, with 54, and the PF ratio is 108. Even when you increase FiO2 to, to 1, it's 87. Now, what happens when you increase to PIP10? Those values are going to change, but uh, still, none of, them, none of the PF ratio here are above 200. And those patients, according to uh, even modified American European criteria, uh, they are considered ARDS patients. And in this case, this particular patient is staying in the unit for 16 days on mechanical ventilation. I don't say anything about it. he survived or he died, but it was a long, um, I mean, long-term mechanical ventilation. Now, let's see this one. This is a patient B, again, hypoxemia with the P5 and 50% or 100%. This patient here meet the criteria to be ARDS for any standard. But in that particular unit, that modified criteria, they try to tie, well, first of all, they, they want to increase PEEP, okay, because 59 was not an acceptable number. So they want to recruit the lung and PEEP, and here it's a big surprise. So now this patient doesn't meet the criteria of ARDS anymore. So now what to do to, to reduce PEEP in order to get this patient included in a clinical trial because I get money from a company, you know, if I include this patient in a clinical trial, or just I continue and I don't, and I exclude it, and this is a patient with ALI for this value of PEEP. So what, in this case, the patient is considered an ALI because of, of this value, and in this particular case, I said the patient was only four days on mechanical ventilation and has a, a, a good course. So, having meeting the criteria of RDS just by changing switching to from five to ten, that criteria disappear. Now we really want to evaluate this fact, and we did a study with fifty something patients with a morti overall mortality rate meeting the, the American European Consensus Conference. That means independently of the value of PEEP, the mortality rate was forty three percent, but 24 hours later, we evaluate those patients. And we would like to see how many of those patients, they don't meet the criteria anymore. And we found that was a very significant portion of patients. They, they improve oxygenation and they were considered to have ALI. Compared to the other, almost half, they still meet the criteria to be, to be considered ARDS. Well, at the end of the study, when you evaluate the, the outcome, was a strikingly different. I mean, this patient behaved completely different and has a very low mortality rate compared to the true ARDS. That study was again validated years later in Toronto, 2004, by Neil Ferguson and others. I, in fact, Bob Kasmarek was one of the authors. They have a, a small uh, sample, 41, but again, the same thing, American European definition. The, the mortality rate, sorry for the Spanish here, mortality, mortality was 30%. And again, 24 hours later, they evaluate these patients and they try to see how many of those still meet the criteria. And the criteria was met by almost half again, and the mortality rate was above 50% compared to this, less than 20%. This is a very low mortality rate. That is a big difference when you see that compared to the Scandinavian study of 41 because of the definition problem. So this is why today, I believe that we are talking about different things here in these meetings. When, if you only analyze the results of any clinical trial of any observational study, and you don't take in consideration the criteria has been used to define those patients, we we are not talking about the same thing. We are talking about apples and oranges and and and, uh, and, and bananas, you know. But we are talking about the same disease process. We are not going to. Uh, we are talking about the same kind of patients because 
I believe that a patient who is, has this x-ray and 24 hours later stay almost the same, I will call the true ARDS patient because if the patient is like this, that I'll, I'll, after two or three hours of a very good treatment, I mean not only mechanical ventilation, but a stabilization of hemodynamics, you know, antibiotics, appropriate care, you completely change, reverse the x-ray, we are not talking about the same disease. You cannot cure ARDS in three hours without drugs, a particular and specific drug. So those patients are really completely different ones. And in fact, when you take in consideration a population of patients like this and a population like that, you have a completely different outcome. This patient has a very low mortality rate by definition because we, today we are very good physicians. We take care very good, very well of these kind of patients. The mortality rate of patients with a very mild uh, acute respiratory failure is fantastic, very low, less than 20%, compared to this group that is still uh, in the range of 50 to 60%, especially when you are dealing with patients with sepsis. So, and that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.